Friday practice at the Red Bull Ring is over and the fastest driver of the day was Lando Norris in the McLaren as McLaren looked to be recovering from the Canadian Grand Prix. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from Friday practice. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about the top teams later on, so please do stick around for that. Yep, Friday is over at the Red Bull Ring, and it was a day where we got to see some future F1 prospects, as Dino Beganovic got to go in Charles Leclerc's Ferrari, and Alexander Dunn got to drive Lando Norris's McLaren, and Alex really impressed, as he was pretty quickly lapping fairly close to Oscar Piastri, who was of course his teammate. As ever though with the Red Bull Ring, we saw plenty of mistakes as the drivers were getting to grips. Alonso had a spin and we also saw Charles Leclerc going through the gravel in FP2 and was pretty close to crashing out. Speaking of FP2, let's now compare the fastest lap of Lando Norris from FP2 to George Russell who set the fastest time in FP1 to see how the lap times compared between the two sessions. And what we can see here is that firstly, as usual, the power unit is turned up more in FP2, as Lando Norris in the third DRS zone reaches a top speed of 322 kilometers per hour, compared to George Russell who only reached 314 kilometers per hour, showing that Norris was probably using some more deployment and had the engine turned up just a little bit more. Also, you can see how the grip has increased at the apex of turn 1, for example, as Lando Norris carried 9 km per hour more speed. Then, at the high speed corners at the end of sector 2, Lando Norris carries 11 km per hour more speed, showing how the circuit grip has massively increased, and also how the drivers were able to push the cars harder in FP2 compared to FP1, as the setups have been refined just a little bit more. Altogether, there was a lap time difference of 9 tenths of a second, which is quite a lot when you consider that the lap time is only 64 seconds. So we've seen how the times change from FP1 to FP2, but now let's take a look at the top speeds that the teams are able to reach, and who is looking quick so far in a straight line. Well, the fastest team in a straight line from free practice today was Aston Martin, as they were able to reach a top speed of 325 kilometers per hour, which is about 202 miles per hour. Right behind them though, we see that Red Bull, Mercedes and McLaren all reached a top speed of 324 kilometers per hour, with Ferrari just behind at 322 kilometers per hour. So it looks like that the top teams are all running with very much the similar levels of wing angle and downforce, at least right now. The only team that really seems to be off the pace in terms of straight line performance is Williams, but they are a very long way away, only reaching 318 kilometers per hour. I have a feeling that the reason for this is that they currently have things turned down a lot more than everyone else, and they were just trying to conserve engine mileage. And I expect that tomorrow through qualifying, we will see Williams' top speed be more in line with their rivals. So we've seen how the top speeds compared, but now let's talk about Aston Martin, as it looks like that once again, Aston Martin are starting their week off very well, and it is fair to say that the arrival of Adrian Newey is really starting to help them out now, as we saw another strong performance in the midfield from them, as Lance Stroll finished the day in a lofty height of 4th place, and teammate Fernando Alonso also finished in the top 10 with a 9th place finish, and Aston Martin are really starting to look stronger now as the season progresses. In the midfield today, it was the battle of the green machines, as the other midfield car that was pretty close to them was Gabriel Bortoletto in the Sauber. But how did the lap time of Lance Stroll and Gabriel Bortoletto compare? Well, let's compare the fastest lap of Stroll and Bortoletto. The colours are pretty close, but I can't really do anything about it. And I have to be honest, I don't think I've ever said before, let's compare the times of Bortoletto to Stroll, but here we go. And well, where are the differences? 
Well, the main area where Stroll seems to be faster than Gabby is in the braking zone at turn one, as Stroll was later on the brakes and gained around two tenths of a second very quickly. And then at the braking zone at the end of the third DRS zone, it looks like once again Stroll was later on the brakes and carried more speed. And I have a feeling that it is because the Aston Martin looks to be very strong and stable on the brakes, which is important at this kind of circuit. In the highest speed corners towards the end of sector 2, it does actually look like the Sauber was a little bit better than the Aston Martin. Overall though, things are very close between them, but I still expect that we will see Williams come back towards them tomorrow in qualifying when they hopefully have the power unit turned up just a little bit more. I just want to say if you are enjoying the video so far then I would really appreciate it if you hit like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about Red Bull. For Red Bull then, it was a pretty solid day as Max Verstappen was the closest driver to the two McLarens, but not only that, but Yuki Tsunoda in the second Red Bull also had a solid day and finished in the top 10 with a P7 result. And a P7 for Red Bull is very solid at this point in the season given how things have been so far and they do now have a lot to build on. This was a very solid day for them, especially when Red Bull typically struggle on Friday and then improve overnight and turn the power units up more than their rivals when it comes to Saturday. For them, it was a very solid day, but how were they looking on the longer runs? Well, let's compare the long run of Lando Norris to Max Verstappen to see if Red Bull are looking good in race pace as well as qualifying pace. And when you look at these longer runs from Friday, you can see that Verstappen did his runs on the soft tyres compared to Norris who was on the mediums. But looking at these, it looks as though Norris and McLaren still has the edge over Verstappen. But this could just be the medium tyres being in a better condition than the soft compounds, which I probably think were used for the fast laps. That being said, McLaren do look like right now they have the edge when it comes to the race runs. But that being said, Red Bull still look to be pretty close, especially over one lap. And if they can nail the one lap and then get ahead in the race, then they could make McLaren's life a little bit more difficult in the Grand Prix. For Ferrari then, it was a reasonable day all things considered. Charles Leclerc missed FP1 making his way for Dino, and other than an error in FP2, it actually looked like all went pretty well for Leclerc as he was the fifth fastest driver of the day. Teammate Lewis Hamilton had some minor issues in FP1, which could have potentially set him back a little bit. But historically, this has never really been one of Hamilton's strongest circuits. Let's now compare the fastest lap of Charles Leclerc to Lewis Hamilton, so we can see where the differences were between them. And when you look at the two laps, it looks as though Hamilton between the two was actually the later driver on the brakes. However, he compromises his exit more than Charles Leclerc in doing so. And this actually gave Charles Leclerc more of an advantage, because he gained more time on the exit of the corners than Lewis Hamilton gained on the entry of the corners. Looking at this, if Lewis braked slightly earlier, then maybe he would also be able to get to better exits and be closer to the time of Charles Leclerc. In the medium to higher speed corners towards the end of sector two as well, it looks like Charles Leclerc is slightly more committed and slightly faster, which could be down to his confidence at this circuit. For qualifying then, I expect a close fight between Ferrari and Mercedes. For Mercedes then, it was another solid day as George Russell topped the times in FP1 and in FP2, Russell was one of the first guys to go for the soft tyre qualifying run, which means that the circuit wasn't in as good of a condition when he did his lap and he was still able to finish in 6th place, which is pretty decent and teammate Kimi Antonelli was in 11th place just behind Lewis Hamilton. So it looks like right now Mercedes are right there with the Ferrari cars, but how are they looking on the longer runs? Well, let's compare the long run of Charles Leclerc to George Russell, so we can see which team right now is looking strong. When you look at the longer runs, it is actually fairly hard to judge because George Russell spent longer on the medium tyres, 
But based on the laps that we do have, it looks as though Ferrari might just be a little bit quicker at the moment. In general, there was about two tenths of a second between them in the favour of Ferrari and Charles Leclerc. But again, this could have been just a tyre age gap more than anything else, with the circuit being in a better condition when Charles Leclerc started his longer runs. Either way, as I said before, things are looking very close between Mercedes and Ferrari. And who knows, we might just see Ferrari hop back up to second place in the Constructors' Championship. Finally for McLaren then, it was a return to form for them after a tricky weekend in Montreal, as it was a 1-2 result for them today in FP2 at the Red Bull Ring, and they are looking pretty good. This has historically been a very, very strong circuit for Lando Norris, and he has a great track record here. It is really the perfect place for him to bounce back after crashing out in Montreal, and it's a perfect place for him to bounce back by getting pole position and winning the Grand Prix. But teammate Oscar Piastri is right on his heels, as is the Red Bull driver of Max Verstappen. So let's now compare the fastest lap of Lando Norris to teammate Piastri to see what we can learn. And when you compare the two laps, in general things are very close between them and their laps are pretty identical, with only really minor differences. The biggest difference between the two looks to be at the start of Sector 3, where Norris gets better traction and a better exit. But honestly, there is not a lot to tell between them, which is going to make qualifying very exciting and very close in the fight for pole position. So with that in mind then, what are my qualifying predictions for the Austrian Grand Prix? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. P4 will be George Russell in the Mercedes. P3 will be Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. P2 will be Oscar Piastri. And yeah, I think Lando Norris can bounce back and get pole position for the Austrian Grand Prix. But those are my thoughts. The question is, what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, please do let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.